Good morning. Today is Monday, September 23rd, 2024. Today in history, 28 years ago today, Japanese cartoonist Fujiko F. Fujio passed away. His masterpiece, Doraemon, became a timeless classic for children. To honor his legacy, Japan established the Doraemon Promenade in Takoka City. Welcome to today's Qingqiao Morning News. Let's start with political updates. Over half of Thai citizens lack confidence in Patingtarn. Comprehensive news from Bangkok. On September 15, the National Institute of Development Management of Thailand released a poll showing that 57.94% of respondents lack confidence in the Patingtarn government's ability to address national issues. Concerns include the new Prime Minister Patingtarn's inexperience, unmet commitments, and excessive interference from former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, which could lead to legal challenges for the government. Analysts emphasize that addressing high household debt should be a priority. Patingtarn's policy statement highlighted this issue, and the government has proposed measures such as reducing the financial institution's development fund contribution rate to allow banks to better assist mortgage borrowers in restructuring their debts. Germany's increased border controls spark discontent among neighbors. According to Reuters, Germany's recent border control measures have sparked dissatisfaction among neighboring countries, which are concerned about increased asylum seeker numbers and potential trade impacts. Polish Prime Minister Tusk has called for urgent consultations with affected nations, while Austrian Prime Minister Niehammer warned of retaliatory measures if Germany increases migrant returns at their shared border, potentially leading Austria to send more migrants to the Balkans. On September 16, Germany introduced temporary border controls on its western and northern borders for six months. The measures aim to strengthen Germany's stance on illegal immigration, driven by a surge in arrivals, particularly refugees from the Middle East, and rising support for far-right and conservative parties domestically. U.S. and U.K. temporarily restrict Ukraine from using long-range missiles against Russia. According to agents France Presa, U.S. President Biden and British Prime Minister Starmer have postponed a decision on whether to permit Ukraine to use long-range missiles provided by the West against Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned that such a move could escalate into a direct conflict between Russia and the West. Russia argues that Ukraine cannot operate long-range missiles independently and relies on Western technical support and satellite guidance. They assert that the use of these missiles would significantly alter the conflict's dynamics. The US, on the other hand, contends that long-range army tactical missile systems are costly and in limited supply, suggesting that Ukraine should focus on countering Russian advances in eastern Ukraine instead. Indian police detained striking Samsung workers. According to news from India, on September 16, Indian police detained over 100 striking workers and union leaders protesting low wages at a Samsung home appliance factory. The police described the action as preventive detention, citing plans for an unauthorized protest march. The factory, located near Chennai in Tamil Nadu, has seen workers on strike for seven days, disrupting production. This accounting for one-third of Samsung Electronics' $12 billion annual revenue in India. Pager explosions across Lebanon injure over 3,000. According to Reuters, on September 17, Lebanese security sources reported a series of pager explosions across Lebanon, injuring over 3,000 people, including Hezbollah fighters and medical personnel. A Hezbollah official, speaking anonymously, described the incident as the biggest security breach the group has faced in its nearly year-long conflict with Israel, adding that the cause of the explosions remains unclear. The explosions occurred over the span of an hour. In response, Lebanon's Ministry of Health's Crisis Action Center called on all medical personnel to report to hospitals to manage the surge of injured people seeking emergency care. 
The Lebanese Red Cross mobilized over 50 ambulances and 300 medical personnel to assist with evacuating the wounded. Severe flooding hit Central Europe. According to Xinhua News Agency, recent heavy rainfall in eastern Romania has caused severe flooding, resulting in at least four deaths and the destruction of thousands of homes. The prolonged downpour has led to rising river levels across Central and Eastern Europe, prompting many regions to issue flood alerts. In some towns along the Czech-Polish border, residents were evacuated as rivers exceeded warning levels. In Prague, which experienced devastating floods in 2002, flood prevention measures have been implemented. In Poland, authorities are closely monitoring the Bialka River, which flows through the historic city of Glucialazy, and have put preventive measures in place. Hungary is also preparing for record high water levels on the Danube River, with plans to close low-lying piers in Budapest. Iran successfully launches satellite for the second time this year. According to Iranian news reports, Iran recently launched the Shamran-1 research satellite into space, marking its second successful satellite launch this year. The satellite, designed and manufactured by Iran Electronics Industry Company, was placed in orbit 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The launch comes amidst accusations from the United States and European countries that Iran has been transferring ballistic missiles to Russia. Some speculate that Iran's satellite activities may be a cover for its ballistic missile development, a claim Iran has denied. While Iran has a large-scale missile program, many of its satellite launches in recent years have faced technical challenges, often resulting in failure. According to Chihuahua Daily, the main contract of China's 30-year Treasury bond futures recently closed at 114.330 yuan reflecting an increase of 0.70%. That's all for today's Qingqiao Morning News. Thanks for watching. Join us at the same time tomorrow.